All right, hello everybody, and welcome to a new Source Gaming Discussion. Today, we are talking about the new Mario Kart Switch title, which has some new rumors today, and today I'm also joined by Wolfman. Hello, happy to be here. Yep, and we're going to, you know, discuss everything that can be in the game, from characters, to the tracks, to battle mode, to stages in battle mode, to mechanics, stuff like that. So, let's start off with characters, Wolfman. What are some ideas for what you'd like to see in the new Mario Kart? Assuming that this is an expanded port, um, which is, I think, what we're mostly going on, but we'll talk about that yeah, later. Yeah, it pretty much has to be at this point with King Boo in the trailer. Yeah, I feel like we've kind of hit a lot of the main Mario characters in this one, so I'd like to see them go for different parts of the franchise that generally don't get a lot of, like, reference in Mario Kart. I think Dr. Mario and Paper Mario would be good choices. I know we kind of are inundated with a lot of Marios, but those are characters with a lot of their own history. Um, yeah, Doc would be pretty cool. Yeah, or a Paper Mario character, uh, Goombella, for instance. I mean, we've never had a Goomba drive a car, but still. Um, I think having some retro characters like Wart or Foreman Spike or Donkey Kong Jr. from the original Super Mario Kart would be good choices. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to reference what you said about Paper Mario, though. I think Paper Mario is a really cool idea because we were talking about this a bit before, but like you could have him just be 2D in his cart, so wherever you view him, he's always paper. Or whatever, like he is on his games, or you could have like another whole special mechanic where like he appears flat wherever you are, like even his card appears flat. I think that'd be a really cool addition to the game. Just like characters like that, that like mix stuff up and like make the mechanics seem kind of different, you know? No, I absolutely agree. I the thing with Mario Kart is that you know obviously this is a Smash site first and probably foremost, and with Smash you have like. Every character is so specific. Even the clones, like, have their own unique identities. And in Mario Kart, that's really not the case. Mario, like, the Mario Kart characters are basically just defaults with some nice animations. It's really the stages that have the personality. So I think what really matters is for the characters is just, like, referencing things that maybe haven't gotten as nice of a reference yet. Um, yeah. Like, Paper Mario is, like, a whole big thing, as is Dr. Mario, as is Mario Maker. I guess you could have Mary O or the Pigeon. <laughs> I would be yeah. cool with uh, having a Pigeon in the game. You know, I, w- I want to mention what you said about, uh, like, character uniqueness, like Smash, you know? Because that's actually something that was sort of tried in Double Dash, where some characters had specific items just for them. Like, do you think that'd be interesting to see come back? Um, I'm not sure, and I'm a little bit disinclined to that, but that's really more, less because of it being a bad idea, I think it's a cool idea in more of the fact that that was central to Double Dash. Mm-hmm. And Double, like, Double Dash was based around that mechanic and around the two characters. Like, yeah. you have to have the characters be unique because you're literally, like, because they are working as a team. I, like, I'm not sure how well, if that would work as well without that. No, yeah, I got you there. I want to mention what you said about Foreman Spike. For those who don't know, Foreman Spike is the antagonist of Wrecking Crew, I think it is. And, yeah, so basically what he does is he'll try to knock down what Mario and Luigi build, correct? Yes. He, the, he's the villain in uh, Wrecking Crew. Basically, he's the evil construction worker while Mario and Luigi are the good <laughs> construction workers. He's Mario's actually got, like, kind of a very vaguely inspo- Foreman Spike-inspired outfit, the black Mario suit in Smash. Mm-hmm. I think it'd be cool to see characters like that. Like, that's why I like Mario Kart Wii. We got some cool characters like Funky Kong and stuff who I'd love to see come back. And speaking of characters I'd like to see come back is I'd let, I wanted my guy Dry Bones back, man. Like, free Dry Bones. Where's he been? Get him back in here. Oh, yeah. I, I definitely want Dry Bones. I definitely want Birdo. And I also want Kamek. Oh, yeah, Kamek. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she was cut from Super the first Super Mario Kart, correct? Yes. Uh, no, no, no. Not the first uh, Mario oh, Kart 64. 64. Basically, 64, yeah. Kamek was sort of a placeholder because they weren't sure about whether or not, like, the rights issues with Rare and Donkey Kong, like, it was sort of this weirdly nebulous place, which is kind of hilarious when you consider how Donkey Kong is so central to the Mario universe. So, also, uh, we mentioned on uh, on our list that we sort of have as an outline, the idea of Nabbit. Now, I think Nabbit is kind of maybe a sure bet. Like, I feel like amongst new characters, he could be a pretty solid pick. What do you think? My feeling is basically that since Rosalina, we've only had real, like, one main char- new character, and that's Captain Toad. And since Captain Toad really doesn't, like, look any different from a normal Toad, it's Nabbit would be the next one. They like to have new characters, and that makes sense, so... Uh, it helps create the feeling that the Mario universe has things in it that are consistently being added instead of just, like, all the old characters. 
that's why it was important for Smash uh, 4 to have so many new, like, newer new characters. No, yeah, I got you there. One thing you, uh, we also have on this list, one last new character before we move on the sta- uh, track stages or whatever, is uh, one I especially agree with is Professor Egad. Now, I think everybody's sort of been mentioning him for a while, right? As it's like, look, we want Egad back. Like, well, not back, we want him in the game, because it's like, he's from Luigi's Mansion, a very loved character. We haven't seen him in anything but really Luigi's Mansion. He's really popular, too. Luigi's, Egad is a really interesting character, because if you actually, despite the fact that he's so pop, he's actually really popular, he's only been in, like, seven games, and most of those were cameos. The thing that he- Oh, yeah, you're right. He isn't just Luigi's Mansion, right? He's also in Mario and Luigi, too, right? Yeah. Uh, the thing with- him is that he kind of kicked off he in, in a waluigi in a way for mario tennis kind of kicked off this trend around the gamecube era basically in that time mario games were more like party games and sports games like we only the only new fundamentally new game we got was sunshine and so a lot of these were these sort of multiplayer games that were based around a much larger cast that's where you also get bowser jr and you get pd piranha and king boo and the Mario cast basically, like, expanded, and then new Super Mario Brothers came out, and they showed that they could actually, like, make a new, like, a new Mario game with that was just a no-frills 2D platformer. And then Super Mario Galaxy came out, and Rosalina was the only main new character, and after that, it really contracted. So you now have, like... So it's kind of funny, you would have care, like fans around like the mid-2000s basically complaining about Bowser Jr. and P.D. Piranha, and how, like, why don't we have all the original characters back, like the Koopalings, and now it's sort of the reverse. People kind of are now pining for this more character-driven part of the franchise, and I think this is where Mario Kart can really succeed, mm-hmm. is referencing those characters. And Egad is a great one among them. He's funny, he's weird, he is a delight in both Luigi's Mansion games and the idea of this sort of like inadvertently destructive and self-destructive mad scientist is something the Mario Kart or the Mario franchise could really get a lot of use out of. Yeah, no, completely agree there. And I actually, while you were talking, I remember one last thing about characters. I didn't, I forgot to put on here. I'm surprised I forgot. This is such a major topic of discussion is adding, sort of making Mario Kart and a Nintendo Kart now. Now, I definitely want to see like the games more centered on Mario characters. But I'm down to see, like, Kirby and more Nintendo characters past Link being included in the game. Well, there's also the Villager, who I think was a great choice as well. Oh, yeah, Villager, well. yeah. Um, yeah, I think doing some more of the Nintendo cart is kind of a logical expan- expansion of the franchise. And I definitely think it would be nice. I don't want it to have it dominate the series, but yeah, I would definitely like to see... Uh, I think Olimar and a Pikmin stage would be great. I think having Samus and a Brinstar or Zeeb stage would be and great. And Captain Falcon. Like, Captain Falcon. <laughs> Where's he at? I, yeah. Or the Excite Bike. Hell, the Excite Bike Racer. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm honestly thinking we did, like, for Mario Kart 8, they had, like, me costumes. I just think, like, why not just take the next step and just make the Amiibo give you new characters, like some Nintendo characters. I mean, I get some people be upset about that. You can't unlock them without the Amiibo. But at this point, it's like, you know, they need more use out of those things. I wouldn't put it past them to do that. I feel like the Amiibo should be used for something other than, like, a like a barrier for content, I think. Yeah, but, I mean, with Mario Kart, can you really count the characters as too much content when, That's like, true. it's weight classes? I mean, yeah, like, like I mean, I w- it was just saying that a few minutes ago, that they're yeah. not really that important as characters. Uh, yeah, I could see that. I do think that one of the th- appeals of a party game is having a lot of choice for what you can choose from. So in that sense, I'm a little less inclined to do that. Like in Splatoon, mm-hmm. I don't think it's as important for the first player, like the single player stages to have the different kinds of guns. Yeah. Oh, speaking of which, an Inkling. Yeah, Inkling, of course. Like, and a Splatoon how stage. how popular they're getting. Like, they, yeah, if they're adding more Nintendo characters, I could see Inkling and Captain Falcon and such sort of being pretty likely to be in. Especially Inkling, they sort of fit that art style, you know? Yeah. Um, should we, are we going to go to stages or should we talk about the rumors? Yeah, I was, I was just about to talk to, uh, the, uh talk about the, uh, tracks. So, uh, we were going to mention tracks. There's rumors coming out right now, came out this morning, that Mario Kart 8.5, Switch, whatever you want to call it, is going to have 16 tracks. And that came from Tamaki on Twitter. Don't quote me on that. That's what I've heard. And I can definitely, like, even without that rumor, I could bet on 16 tracks, like, being included. That's four different cups. That's enough content to really, like, last and then make it a whole new title. Now, 
Of course, there's many w different ways we could go in terms of what these tracks could be. Of course, I would think one would probably be sort of like the so like uh, Mexican Spanish setting of uh, the new Mario that we saw in that trailer. I could see one of those being a sta track. What do you think? Oh, definitely. I think generally we're going to have to see stages based on contemporary Mario titles. So like we had Super mm -hmm. Bell Subway, which is sort of based on 3D World, but I, I mean, based on it in the sense that it's named after the Super Bell, but I think having a more Mario 3D World based stage would be good. Having a Mario Maker one, I don't know how that would even work, but I think that would be really cool. Yeah, Mario Maker track would be awesome. Like, it sort of changes each time. That'd be really cool. I mean, with Mario Kart, like, not really being a game focused on fairness in any way, shape, or form, it's like, you know, a changing track every time. Kind of like the Excite Bike track, actually, DLC for Mario Kart 8. Yeah. It'd be pretty awesome. Um, yeah, even if it just changed visually, like the Animal Crossing course, that would still Oh, be yeah, true, true. And uh, for uh, well, tracks that need to be brought back, like, we have ideas for tracks coming back, I put down Royal Coliseum on the GameCube, because uh, for those who have played Mario Kart Double Dash, that, that, that track just fits perfectly with the whole Mario Kart 8 anti-gravity setting. It, it, you kind of already go upside down and stuff in that track. It just makes too much sense to me. I was shocked it didn't come in, in the game at launch, nor DLC. I, I was actually shocked. I thought that, that stage was an absolute shoe in but it wasn't. And so I, I'd be shocked again if they did not bring it in with this port. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say that. that would make That's like the only one that seems like a real glaring omission just for the mechanical level. Um, I think having some more, I think bringing back some of the Donkey Kong stages would be nice. Uh, there's mm -hmm. really only oh, one. Dude, DK Summit. I want DK Summit back from Mario Kart Wii. That was like, that was my favorite track. It was kind of similar to DK, uh, wait, there's DK Mountain and DK Summit. They were pretty similar, I think, but I love DK Summit. That was a fun track with like the Shy Guys snowboarding around. Yeah. Doing like, on the half pipes, that was fun. Uh, also, uh, from Mario Kart Wii, I would definitely like to see, um, what is that stage? Um, no, car the Coconut Mall. Oh, co oh, dude, Coconut Mall. That was awesome. That was in the 3DS version. They brought that back for that. I, I don't think you played that one, but that, that, I love that track. That was awesome. Yeah. And Toad's Factory, maybe? Uh, Toad's Factory. Uh, yeah, dude, dude, Mario Kart Wii had really good tracks. People don't give enough credit for its tracks. I think all of them are almost instant classics to me. I love them a lot. Some were bad, but a lot of them I loved. If we're getting battle mode, which we'll talk about later, but um, if we're getting battle mode, there's definitely some stages there that would be good. Twilight House from DS, uh, the Block Part Plaza from Wii. Yeah, I mean, let's might as well just jump into battle mode because, I mean, we've already sort of named that we thought about tracks. We're going to sort of short on time here, but yeah, battle mode. So we've also heard from a rumor that battle mode is likely to be brought back into Mario Kart Switch, but sort of buffed up, because people complained so much about how bad m Battle Mode was in the Wii U version, and I have to agree, it's pretty terrible, and so I'm glad to see it make a return to form. Sorry, I was just going to mention that the thing with Battle Mode is that if they're going to do more than just a port, that's really the only area that they could really dramatically change. Mm -hmm. um, oh, also, uh, for Mario Kart 64, Banshee Boardwalk. Oh yeah, yeah, that, that'd be awesome. I, there's so many... So many classic tracks that I, I can only imagine being the guy working on Mario Kart Switch as like, which ones do I pick? Because everybody loves so many. Like, it's crazy how good they make these tracks. Everybody wants to see them back. And I think it's also important to remember that, like, the DLC from 8 in particular was really good at redesigning mm -hmm. the stages. Like, they had GBA stages that were turned into these incredible, gorgeous tracks. Oh, yeah, they were great. I mean, Ribbon Road is insane, and it's so absolutely unlike... The original. Mm-hmm. Um, it's phenomenal. It's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, so for battle mode, we were mentioning uh, stages. We, uh, yeah, I guess you're called stages for battle mode. We like to see come back. I picked Delfino Pier and Funky Stadium, both in the Wii version, because that was the game I played the most battle mode on. I love those two uh, stages. Delfino Pier, I think, is awesome because you're on Delfino Pier. It's really fun to sort of go down underwater, sort of hide under there. You see that with my friends all the time. Funky Stadium was also sick. You jumped out of like a huge upper top to jump down into the stadium. That was always awesome. That was fun. Okay, this is going to be a ridiculous idea, and there's no way Nintendo would go for it, but I say they should bring back the GameCube battle mode stage from Double Dash. The one, mm -hmm. yeah. the one where you're inside <laughs> a giant GameCube? GameCube. Yeah. yeah or just switch it. Yeah, you could just call, or you could just have a new one inspired by that where you just play inside a giant Switch. Oh, that'd be so sick. You know what they could do? Is they have another stage like that in the DS version called, where you just play on Nintendo DS. What if they combined sort of all three of those ideas and had a bunch of Nintendo systems you find on top of? Yeah, um, that would also be great for a course, too. You could start an, a Game & Watch, move to an NES and a Game Boy, and just go all the way to a Switch. 
That'd be awesome. Uh, and for battle mode, I just sort of thought of this because with the Wii U version, they just sort of did it on track, so it wasn't they didn't do too much with it. But this is actually the first time we see a battle mode tracks take full advantage of these anti gravity like sections. Yeah, that is true. Um, in that case, I guess we. I definitely think we need to get one based on Mario Galaxy. Oh, dude, yes, yeah. I was thinking for Fucky Stadium, like it's awesome how it's already a stadium you can make them go up on the walls, up uh, back up and stuff. I think that'd be yeah. It's just so many perfect ideas. It's I thought this anti gravity thing was kind of stupid when the game was first announced, but now I realize just how much it adds sort of depth to the game when you really think about it. It's the first time when you play Mario Kart Eight and you go in not like one of the normal stages where it's just sort of perfunctory, but still nice, but like. Mm-hmm. The Mario Kart, the Mario Circuit, when you just realize how insane it is to go upside down, and it just, it doesn't even feel that disorienting. Yeah, the crazy part about the Mario Kart 8, man, is that, like, not only does it not feel disorienting, it feels great, but also, like, all the detail in that game. Like, for the tracks, every single little function on that map, like, why it goes upside down and stuff, all is a reason. Like, for Mario Circuit, it's like, you see, like, these things are pushing the stage up to hold it up in the sky. Like, there's nothing that's unexplained. Like, it all has some sort of, like, reason to it. And I think that's just so cool, the environment of the stages in Mario Kart. It is a gorgeous game. It is an oh, absolutely yeah. gorgeous game. It's unbelievably beautiful. Um, Like, there are times when I'll look at it and I'll play it again and I'm just like, you know, it's completely insane how good this looks. Like, it's crazy. And it's like, I remember in, I was thinking back to in Smash Brothers Brawl when because of the limitations of the graphics, they, the stadium, like the part in the subspace emissary, you mm-hmm. just see like very little animation in the crowds because, I mean, th- that's understandable. There were limits there. And I was just thinking like, this is eight years later and it's insane how much how, how like the power and the ability to use that power has come forward. oh yeah no it's amazing how much nintendo is able to do like i give them a lot of crap all the time for stuff they don't do that is pretty obvious that they should do but when it came to the wii u which was a pretty underpowered console they did some phenomenal phenomenal graphic work on that it was a be- it, beautiful games on the wii u yeah um they, i think it's they have always had a very strong art direction yeah, it's phenomenal. I mean, they, they work really hard to make HD work, and they really take full advantage of it. But getting on to the final thing, the rumor. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I'm just going to mention, there's a 16-track one, but in general, the basic rumor that we've been seeing is that it will be, like, new content, the all of the old content and all the DLC from 8, yeah. and the new stuff will include, you know, the new battle mode, new courses, and new characters, and that... It's also, apparently the development is complete and it'll be made near launch window. Yeah, that makes sense. I, yeah, I also heard that even though it is complete, they might be pushing it back to try to delay releases to try to keep hype for the Switch going until Zelda. That was rumor I heard. So it, we could not see it till like May or something, which actually, you know, that, they could release it on the, on the anniversary of Mario Kart 8. Yeah, uh, my feeling is this. Nintendo is... When they made that Switch trailer, they knew exactly what they were showing. Like, they were, they knew what they wanted to show you and what they didn't. Like, you know, obviously mm-hmm. there are trailers that kind of screw up or show something that they don't want to be shown. But in general, like, they were, this is something that was going to have a huge amount of scrutiny behind it. And I think it's very telling that the small, the, the sliver of what we see from Mario, from the Mario Kart Switch is a DLC stage from 8, a new character, and a new item mechanic. And, or yep. at least an old item mechanic, the uh, two items. Yep. Meaning that they are, that to me that is so important because they could have chosen any other stage, but they chose a DLC one with King Boo using the two items. And I think yeah. that is a very clear sign that there will be that it's not just that this is going to be a port or an expanded port but a little bit more than that yeah and i think the just to sum it all up the entire idea of mario kart switch really works i wasn't sold on it at first when i heard the rumors before i ever saw the switch i was like okay just a buffed up mario kart but then i think like what the switch is for because you see the trailer they're showing adults right and when i was a kid I brought my ds out if i was going on a road trip we would all do ds download play and i play a shy guys and that was what we did for mario kart but I'm watching this trailer, and now that I'm an adult now, it's like, on spring break, I'm going down with my friends, and I'm partying at the beach, right? We drive down to the beach. It's like, 
it's gonna be fun for me to bring out the Switch. Everybody in the back is gonna be able to pull up the controllers on the side and be able to play. Like, that is so cool to me. So you can just pop it off and these little Joy-Cons work as a controller. I think that changes the entire game and it's just gonna make gaming, like, it's gonna change gaming for a while. I think Smash wrote an article about how the Switch is the future and I completely agree because it's, it's really cool what this thing does and how it changes things. But yeah, man, I think we're both super excited for a Mario Kart on the Switch. I think it's, I think it's got potential to be really I mean, it's already building upon, pretty much everybody agrees, one of the best Mario Kart games of all time. It's only going to be better from here, right? Mario think... Kart 8 is fantastic, and if it's just... I mean, I do want to see just stuff that's not just this thing I liked, but more of it, but Mario Kart 8 is really good. Yeah, and then they can build upon the thing it was it got bad reviews for and it got took points off for, which is battle mode, and they're kind of done there. It's like, boom, new content, new battle mode, they fixed it. Yeah, and even you could keep the same tracks if you wanted to do that, which I don't think you would, but still. Yeah, no, for sure. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. You guys can check out Wolfman. We'll put his information in the description as well. Wolfman, you want to say anything before we head out? Um, I don't know. I'm not really good at goodbyes. Well, there you go. That's what he has to say, boys. All right, you guys can check me out in the description as well, my YouTube and stuff. Be sure to subscribe to Source Gaming before you do any of that, of course, because we need more subs here. We love you guys, and we appreciate you guys for watching. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, tell us what you want to see next. We love you guys. See you guys next time. See ya.